Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Thank you for being here. Now every maker in their shop has areas that they are not quite proud of. And this is definitely one of mine. I hate this thing. It's absolutely horrid. It's spaced way too much. and I've got an idea to really clean it up and make it better. So without further ado, let's get on in it and uh, see how it goes. All right, so let's talk about exactly what this lumber rack is. It's layered plywood that I made from one sheet of plywood. If you guys remember years back, the Rockler Plywood Challenge or the one sheet of plywood challenge put on by the Modern Maker Podcast. Um, they actually have a new challenge going on right now and um, not sponsored by them, but it's actually a pretty cool idea where it's called the Rockler Hobby Challenge where you do your hobby in woodworking to support or make something for another hobby that you have. And so um, I'll actually put a link to that challenge down below. Uh, not that I'm participating in it in this video, but this did come to mind that it's kind of a cool idea. So let's get rid of this. This is, uh, the spacing is too much. Um, it's actually too, the throat is too deep. Um, and I just don't like it anymore. It's not functional. So I've got an idea to come up with a hyper functional lumber rack. And of course it's going to be modular because that's kind of what we do around here. Um, yeah, so let's dive into it. All right. Thanks for being here. You don't really need to see me take everything off, do you? <laughs> of course you don't need to see me take it off. It's all done. Well, you see a little bit of water damage there. That's because the condensate line got clogged one time, but that's neither here nor there. Let's go ahead and put some fresh French cleats up on the wall. I'm doing these the traditional way with the flat bottom and the bevel, the 45 bevel at the top. I'm cutting these around five inches or so. Then I'm going to bisect those right in half giving me two evenly spaced cleats. I'm gonna come back as well with the blade straightened back out, only raise it up just a little bit to take that sharp edge off to 45. We're gonna take these old cleats off because I do want some continuity and these are just a little bit different in size. And all that water damage, well, we're gonna take care of that with a random orbit sander make it look like it never happened. So I'd like to show you my tried and true method again of installing cleats the easiest way I know possible. Make sure it's level, tack it in place with some brads in between those two countersunk holes and then take a pan head screw and install it just like this. That pan head's gonna really, really give it the best strength possible. It's kind of a new iteration. I used to use countersink screws, but now I'm trying this and it works even better. Using a spacer block to kind of go up and up, and that's my space. I'm gonna use about six inches in between each one. And then I'm gonna install one of those cantilevered French cleat modular units that I've made to make the countertop. I put that little piece on the back to give it a little bit of a raised up effect. That way when any pressure comes down on it, which it will flex just a little bit, it goes to dead level. So in previous videos, I've made these countertops out of marine grade plywood and also black laminated plywood, essentially giving me a countertop. But this one, well, we're gonna just stick to the Baltic birch and I've got a method I'm gonna show you to finish Baltic to make it absolutely beautiful, stunning, and super strong and protective. So, first off, we're gonna cut some strips down. I'm gonna make, again, the border around this countertop look a little bit beefier than it is by putting a faux border around the edge. Glue, brads, all you're gonna need. Process goes pretty simple. Now this layered plywood border around the edge isn't just for show, it also gives the top some rigidity and some strength. Once I'm done with that, of course plywood edges can be a little rough, a little splintering. So we're gonna take a chamfer bit with a palm router and just kind of barely knock the edge off the bottom, inside and outside. When you reach underneath it, you don't wanna get any splinters, of course. And then for the top, well, we're gonna do something a little different. Of course, I say different, and what I mean by that is I'm actually gonna take about a half inch down with this chamfer bit, giving me a pretty big reveal of the plywood edges. You're gonna see there, that's a pretty big chamfer, but I think it looks good and I'm going with it. Once I've sanded this thing down to about 150, it's time to put on some finish. We're gonna do it outside today. It's a beautiful day, no wind, perfect for it. I'm using an HVLP gun to put on my favorite finish probably of all time, Halcyon Clear. It's a marine varnish from Total Boat. Guys, this finish is unbelievably simple. You spray on three coats with an hour between and that's it. You can buff it with a little bit of 600 grit sandpaper at the very end, but honestly, this finish is beautiful. You're gonna see the result just in a second, but check this out. Is it strong enough? Well, it holds my big butt. I would say so. 
And now that we know it's strong enough and the finish is cured, look how gorgeous this is. This is just a piece of Baltic birch, but look at that figure. Holy mackerel. Woo! I love this thing. You guys definitely owe to yourself to check it out. Try the Halcyon. You won't regret it for sure. And this project is really like no other. Got to do some type of modification for it. Didn't realize that a little border around my 220 outlet is going to get in the way of this. So using a little multi-tool, we're just going to cut it off, notch it out. No problem. Now I've said this time and time again, the best part about having this shop in the backyard that's completely enclosed is that I get free reign when my kids are home with them. And this is about 5% of what you're seeing him do right now. He tries to steal my phone. <laughs> oh, give me that, give me that, give me that. <laughs> such a blessing to have these kids in the shop with me but rest assured they're not around when I'm using the table saw like this now we're gonna cut down some Baltic birds this is half inch in thickness I'm gonna cut a bunch of 10 by 4 inch pieces and that leaves me this little piece that's gonna come into play just in a second now to sand all these down instead of doing this with my sander in the typical fashion I like to mount it upside down I have a lot of pieces to sand and you guys know that I've been sanding a lot of pieces lately and this is really the best way to do it for me Really nice edge, everything's soft, good to go. Now, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna mount it to two of my decorative French cleat brackets that I offer. More about them later, but the CA glue and wood glue method, love this way of doing it. And I'm just a sucker for, you know, tacking things in place with a brad narrow just in case. I don't really need to do this, but for my own peace of mind, I do it anyway. Now, that little piece, we're gonna mount it just like so. And you're gonna see what that's gonna be used for just in a second. Now, I love this marine grade stuff and I'm gonna put it up on the wall too. This is gonna be a smaller shelf near the bottom uh, to hold small parts, little offcuts that are six to eight to 10 inches. I think this is gonna be the perfect solution for it. So since this marine plywood has a layer of laminate on the bottom, I like to stick to mechanical fasteners to really drive home and keep these pieces together. You can see here, I'm just using a few countersunk screws, pretty simple. Now we're gonna put this whole thing together. I made a bunch of these brackets and of course that one shelf you just saw me build. And before we get this thing filled up, let me tell you about this week's sponsor. Hey guys, let me bring you in and tell you about this week's video sponsor, me. <laughs> okay, so I'm putting my shingle out there, if you will, and I'm trying to introduce products to the market. We've done so with these tool holders already and these French cleat decorative and reversible brackets and they've sold pretty well. And I've got something new to show you. You wanna put something together in a 90 degree? Well, you got some of these? Hey, I'm offering these. Let me show you how they work. So whether you're building big cabinets or small drawers, this 90 degree assisting square will really help you. Put it in place with a couple of squeeze clamps, tack it in place with some glue and brads, and you're good to go. This thing is so simple, yet so efficient. Is it square? Well, I'll let you be the judge. I think so. Don't forget to check out our other array of products that I think are helping make maker spaces a bit more aesthetically pleasing while keeping the functionality at a high level. Here are some more details. So thank you all for the consideration. The links are down below to everything I offer here. Thank you so much again. Let's get back to the video. And I'm so glad that guy reached out to sponsor this video. He's such a gentleman. <laughs> anyway, you can see here, dowels are gonna rest on that little shelf. And I think that's a pretty cool idea. So I've moved everything out of the way real quick. I'm about to receive a plywood delivery. Look how many sheets are coming. Check this out. Well, I thought, I guess 40 sheets isn't that much, but I thought it would look a little bit more robust, but now it's time to get to work. <sighs> now, before I show you how all that plywood is broken down and where it is, let's talk about this lumber rack real quick. This modular system is fantastic. You can do it like I've done here, put them spaced pretty tight up and down the wall, or if you want them slightly overhead, maybe a 20 foot span, you can do that too with these decorative French cleat brackets. Pretty cool system, really glad I got this done, really happy with how it turned out, and check this out guys. Just look at how good this looks. Ready, go. I can't tell you how excited I am to get this project done. I've been envisioning this for a long time and I'm really stoked about a place to put that crosscut sled to get it out of the way. I love how this turned out. I hope you guys like it too. So all the plywood has been broken down and here's some of it. Let me show you some more. And of course this rack is completely stocked, 
feels so good. And there's quite a bit of plow storage underneath these, well, yeah, these work surfaces and this new lumber rack. Honestly, guys, this thing came out better than expected. I had this idea. The moment I developed these French cleat brackets, and of course they were for shelving, for long spanses, and I thought, you know, you can get a whole lot of strength out of these if you put just a very small shelf. I mean, essentially, that's what this is. It's just a small shelf and it becomes a rock solid bracket, especially for something as heavy as, as lumber can be. And you can see I've got some, well, you know, some maple, walnut, eight quarter stock, some four quarter, two inches, one inch, you get it. Um, and thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you're interested in this system, you know, you know where it is, down below, first thing in the description, glimpseinside.org, check it out. Um, I've been blown away, again, by the support that you guys have shown, and I just, I can't thank you enough. So, and again, your viewership is enough for me, so thanks for being here all the way to the end of the video, and uh, you guys have a wonderful day. My name is Chris, thanks for taking a glimpse inside this video, and you've made it to my next one, and I will see you on that next one as well. Take care, guys. Bye.